Every December, I receive my Hall of Fame ballot in the mail, and initially, I get excited. For someone who still considers a trip to Cooperstown, New York, as an eight-year-old, one of the best vacations of his life, I realize how much of a privilege it is to have earned this vote. When I scanned this year's ballot, I immediately put an X by Ken Griffey Jr.'s name because the graceful center fielder was a no-doubt first ballot choice. It's unfortunate he didn't get voted in unanimously, something three voters won't ever be able to sufficiently explain to me. I'm surprised it took Mike Piazza, the greatest hitting catcher ever, four years to reach the hall, but I'm sure he's relieved to be in. The excitement about the ballot turns to angst when I see the names of Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens. For the fourth straight year, I didn't vote for them. Based on statistics, they are the greatest player and the greatest starting pitcher I ever covered. Unfortunately, because of the suspicions of performance-enhancing drug use that hovers over them, this vote becomes about more than just statistics. Everyone knows there was a steroid error in baseball. Do I know who did steroids and who didn't? Of course not. The easy solution would be to simply vote for Clemens and Bonds, as about 45% of the writers did. But on my ballot, I can't ignore the substantive information that connects both players to PEDs. On my ballot, I'm not interested in rewarding cheaters. Some argue that Bonds and Clemens already had Hall of Fame careers before they might have used PEDs. But I think that makes it worse. If a few students were competing to become the valedictorian in high school, and one of them was discovered to have cheated, would anyone still honor him because, well, he was already a high academic achiever? No chance. The Hall of Fame instructs voters to consider a player's character, which I do. This isn't a demonstration. I have one vote, and on my ballot, I can't vote for Bonds and Clemens because the suspicions are too glaring. By the way, both players' accomplishments are recognized in the Hall. They just don't have plaques, and I'm not sure if they ever will. I respect those who vote for Bonds and Clemens, and I've never tried to convince someone to vote like me. Still, some Bonds and Clemens supporters will scream, how can you keep Bonds and Clemens out of the Hall of Fame? My answer is always the same. I'm not keeping them out. They've kept themselves out.